Thank you for coming back from our replay reviews. My name is Leah. And my name is Kathy. We are two friends who are here to replay, review, and analyze your favorite video games. And since Kathy has never seen the games before, it helps me view them through her fresh eyes, almost like I'm discovering them again for the first time. We hope it will be a similar experience for you. It's been a long time. I almost sure, forgot. I just already bumped it. Bumped it to my mind. I was like, <laughs> I told you I wasn't going to do that. And immediately after I hit it. Hello. Welcome to the Yakuza Kiwami summary episode. Before we get started, we have added a commenting feature to our website. We chose the free one. You're welcome. I don't know if you have to make an account or not to comment. So if you just click into an episode, there'll be like down at the bottom, it's called Discus. I think a lot of you are probably just uh, shadow people like I am. You don't really interact much. But in case you do want to interact, we have commenting features for each episode on our website. Anything else to announce? If you want to comment, you can also comment on YouTube. That's true. Actually, YouTube in general, we're trying to pay more attention to this season. So if you want to subscribe, that'd be fantastic. We just want to get to 100. We want a custom URL. That's all we want. Help us make it happen. Topic one is just called Kazuma. The main question is really how much of this game is part of Kazuma's plan? And my answer is everything, whether it's directly related or indirectly related. And I am a firm believer that Kazuma planted Haruka's presence in Kiryu's life. And this is by far probably the most manipulative action that we've seen from him because who who does that who plants a child in someone's life knowing that they can manipulate them and even though mm. Kazama's dead I'm sure that he still is going to be changing the game Haruka being at such a young age is going to carry out throughout the rest of the games and maybe something that she does or triggers is going to be something that Kazama planned in the past we both commented when he talked about her father trying to kill her he never addresses haruka by name he says this child this mm -hmm. child is yumi's daughter it's just so disrespectful he's just so smart in this entire game i'm curious if we think that he knew he was going to die or if he knew how he was going to die that's a good question so i guess the third part too is with kazama's plans in this game we know that Kazama is the one who gave Nishiki, when he had his own family, some really crappy dudes. And he probably knows that Nishiki is stronger than Kiryu, and so he's all for having some Nishiki slander put out there. And just trying to ruin his reputation, you think that Kazama's the one who's spreading all this rumor that Nishiki's a weak leader and probably refuses to give money to Nishiki to heal his sister and just in general, making him look so terrible just so Kiryu can look good. It wouldn't surprise me. I don't know that we have evidence, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. And one of my points in my <laughs> paragraph is that like he finds out that Nishiki is the one who killed Dojima, but he doesn't do anything to stop Nishiki's trajectory. Like He just lets it happen. So maybe what we didn't see is him sort of trying to trigger the downfall of Nishiki. Maybe that's his way of getting back at him. I also don't really know why Kazuma would, would be mad with Dojima being out of the picture. So, here's a wild theory that I have. Do you think that Kazuma purposely made up a situation where Dojima could attempt to rape Yumi knowing that either Kiryu or Nishiki is going to be the one who saves her, may or may not be killing Dojima in the process knowing that if Kiryu kills him, he goes to jail. That's going to boost up his street cred. I think it depends on how far back this 10 billion plan started. I would say probably not, just because, and I think I kind of answered my own question, which is why would he care if Dojin was out of the picture? It gives the Kazuma family a bad name if one of their members kills them, which would be Nishiki, because Kiri's the, with the Dojima family, right? Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't really want Nishiki to be the one killing him, which might answer a question that I have later on. So I don't think he did, but again, I wouldn't put it past him. I mm -hmm. feel about this guy the way you feel about Madison from Heavy Rain. Oh. 
<laughs> yes. Okay, so let me launch into my response. So I think at least 80% of it, I don't think he really intended to get shot. <laughs> but I also don't think he was surprised either. Because, as I've already mentioned, he had the opportunity to do something about Nishiki earlier, but didn't. In general, the, the biggest red flag for me that indicates this being just mass manipulation is the fact that Kazuma, and Yumi too, actually, knew the truth about the missing 10 billion, yet Kazuma only says, take care of Yumi and the 10 billion when he gets shot. And then I even, I even added in some devil's advocate here, so someone could even say that, okay, he was shot, he was in pain, he might not be able to talk effectively. And we also learned from Shinji in part three that Kazuma has yet to regain consciousness. So you could argue potentially the chance that Kazuma never really had an opportunity to help Kiryu, except that in part six, he's able to talk just fine after taking the brunt of a grenade blast. So I feel like he would be able to, you know, get a few more coherent words out after being just shot in the shoulder. And then also in part four, Nishiki tosses a bug receiver to Kiryu and we hear Shinji address Kazuma directly saying, Kazuma, we're here. I think Kazuma has regained consciousness at this point and he could have called Kiryu at any time from part four on, but he doesn't. In part six, we learn... Uh, first of all, Kazuma says, sorry I've put you through a lot. So number one, we have a little bit of an indication that he even sees his responsibility in this whole situation. But also, and this is what I, I just realized this time, making my notes. When Yumi was missing, Sunflower contacted Kazuma immediately because that's where she went when she fled the hospital. So she was never missing to Kazuma. Why, when Shinji is visiting Kiryu in prison... Does he tell Kiryu Yumi is missing and that Kazuma and Nishiki are looking for her? I don't know if Kazuma knows that Kiryu and Yumi have something going on between them. It might be one of those things where it's like starting a sentence that's like, I shouldn't tell you this. And it just piques your curiosity, right? I think Shinji truly doesn't know, but Kazuma is using Shinji's innocence in this situation as a vehicle so I think it's almost a way for Kazuma to have a secret, to have some leverage on Kiryu and Nishiki by keeping Yumi's whereabouts. Kazuma is the only one who has an answer. So he's a few steps ahead and he wants to keep the secret to himself so he can use it when he needs to. Either way, he's still like trying to withhold the truth from Kiryu, which is kind of sketchy. We also learn in part six that Kazuma figures out Kiryu was innocent, but he didn't try to get him out of prison. <laughs> I mean, is this Kazuma's way of, I suffered in prison, therefore you must also suffer in prison? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but that is pretty shitty, in my opinion. It's pretty sickening. <laughs> like 10 years for something that you didn't do and someone knows and they don't do anything about it. Okay, continuing on, next point. I don't believe for a second that Kazuma was not keeping tabs on Haruka. And I would even believe that he or Yumi convinced Haruka to search for Mizuki in the first place, which is basically what you were saying, which is Haruka was sort of used as a pawn as a way to get Kiryu into this whole situation. So, to tie this all together, we know Kazuma started this whole situation by stealing the 10 billion. He knew Nishiki was not to be trusted, but instead of stopping him early on, he plants Shinji as a spy, placing him in danger. He knew Kiryu was innocent, but left him to be attacked by forks in prison for 10 years. He conceals the truth about Yumi for over 10 years, letting Kiryu believe she's missing. He does not tell Kiryu the truth about Yumi, the Tenbun, or Haruka when he most likely had opportunity to. Yumi gave Haruka vital information about getting Kiryu to Aris, and it's not impossible to assume that she fed other information to Haruka as well, or even told her to find Mizuki. Aris, the vital location in all of this, was created by Kazuma. So like 100% this whole game was his plan, but I do think just some things happened that he didn't hope would happen. Sounds about right. Sounds like a really good summary. 
Do you want to launch into um, our second Cosmo topic, which mm-hmm. is who has he sacrificed, quote unquote, yeah. to ensure planned success? I feel like the better question would have been who has Kasama not sacrificed because it <laughs> seems like everyone, whether they're directly sacrificed or indirectly, but from the list, and I'm cheating because you already wrote this list, but <laughs> it's, it's Tachibana, Shinji, Nishiki, Seda, and Haruka, and Kiryu in a way, not quite there yet with the sacrifice in the same level as he's still alive, mm-hmm. which holy cow, everyone in that list, everyone besides Haruka is dead right that's rough (laughs) yeah yeah i broke it down into the two games that we've played so far so y0 Mm. i said tachibana makoto she wasn't killed but she was definitely used and she had to Mm -hmm. sacrifice a lot and oda which in parentheses i put oh well because (laughs) he's a (laughs) snake but yeah those three people were were definitely used by kazuma and tachibana paid with his life and makoto paid with everything that she cared about pretty much Mm -hmm. and then in this game i broke it down to direct and indirect so indirectly sarah i don't think that he killed him i think nishiki killed him but Mm -hmm. he died and he was part of the plan nishiki i definitely think he was manipulated by kazuma yumi dead haruka a child unforgivable and kiryu Kiryu gets used by Kazuma two games in a row. Not okay. And then directly, I said, you know, even maybe Nishiki was direct. It could have mm-hmm. been. Even Kiryu. Even Haruka. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> Yumi made her own decision, so we'll leave her indirect. But directly... But did she? Did she? Did was she? she misled? I mean, right. here's the thing. Kazuma is so smart. The fact that Kiryu immediately up- says it's okay with everything you've done, all the crap and BS that you pulled, that's like how easily people can be manipulated around just being just directly reaching out to Kazama. So I feel like even though Yumi got a choice, did she really get a choice or was she talked into making that choice thinking it's her own choice when it wasn't? I agree with you. I'm giving Kazama the benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to do that a lot in this topic. (laughs) It's not easy though. There's a lot stacked against him. Mm -hmm. But yes, people directly sacrificed by Kazuma. Number one, Shinji. This man. He he breaks my heart. (laughs) The best sworn brother replacement ever. This Mm -hmm. Shinji is the best and he was sacrificed and it is inexcusable. And then also directly affected is the Mizuki double, which Mm -hmm. I will explain in a minute. Okay. So the transition between our second point and our third point is when we're talking about sacrifices, do you think that Kashiwaki was used in any way? I feel like he somehow factors into Kazan's plan in terms of needing someone who's like your COO to be clean, and I use that in quotes, just someone who isn't wrapped up in Kazama's manipulative behaviors and plans and, and whatnot. Wow, Kazama's out there like scheming and, and manipulating people. He just needed someone he could trust to do everything without questioning him. I agree. Kazama, it's like this is all just a game to him. He loves these grandiose plans. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's addicted to it. And he leaves Kashiwagi to to get things done, to run the actual Yakuza enterprise. Mm-hmm. And so I think you're hundred percent right on that part. I think Kashiwagi's smart and I think he knows what Kazama's up to. But mm-hmm. I think he's okay with it, and probably the benefits he receives from it secondhand. Mm-hmm. And then even the fact that he tells Nishiki not to tell Kazuma when he gave him a second chance, I feel like that, that's proof that he knows Kazuma well, mm-hmm. and how he operates, and he just sort of lets it happen. I mean, if it doesn't affect him, he's not going to stick his neck out. Right. But he always shows up with a truck full of men, wielding baseball bats. Are we ready for our burning questions? Yes. All right. So first question, was Kiryu ever truly dedicated to Nishiki? My answer is, I think he thought he was. We see him protect Nishiki a lot, like distancing himself from him in Y0. But other than that, what do we see that goes beyond a friend or a sworn brother relationship? In this game, all we really see him do for Nishiki is take the fall for killing Dojima and then never outing him 
as the killer when he has opportunity to. Yeah, everything up starting from Y0 all the way through him going to prison. I would say yes. I mean, in Yakuza 0, I have to go back to chapter 6 in that one where he pretty much Always. tells him to do like stay away and I don't want to hurt you if you're in my in my circle. So that's like true dedication. Well, it could have been that Kiryu sitting in jail and he's like, why is Nishiki not visiting me? And you know what? Screw that. And it, maybe that might be the reason. But yes, everything up till going to jail for him, true dedication. Afterwards, he probably doesn't care that they're in the same bubble, but they don't see each other on that same day-to-day basis that he used to. And mm-hmm. just when you're not in that same bubble, you probably just don't care about people as much. Well, yeah, in this game, we don't see Kiryu do enough for Nishiki. Having been in prison for 10 years, you'd think that Kiryu, wanting to see for himself, as he puts it, would include more than, oh, like, one phone call and one face-to-face meeting. He doesn't do anything to try to bring Nishiki back. You know, he so quickly accepts that Nishiki's gone after one face-to-face meeting. These two people grew up in an orphanage together. (laughs) Nishiki had earned... More of Kiryu's benefit of the doubt, but also Kiryu's effort in bringing him back to who he used to be. If we can go back again to Chapter 6 of Yakuza 0, Nishiki says, If you're not with me, I'm useless. Nothing means anything. And Kiryu responds, Me too. We're the same. Kiryu also says, This is the life you just gave me. And you can't try harder to help Nishiki? And the fact that as soon as he's out of jail, one conversation... And he's like, I'm out. But then he strikes up a friendship, that same level of dedication to Date and to just random people. It's just so frustrating to see that. Is he dead to you? My goodness. Why are you just ignoring him? And all of a sudden befriending all these other people. Are they to like replace Nishiki? How do we get from I owe you my life to, you know, I had one meeting with you and you're just, I can't. No, like you're, you're gone. We're done. I mean, how do you not try harder to fight for him? Right? And this is the same person who pulled you back from killing the people at the end of Y0. He was fighting Shibusawa, and he almost killed him. And it was Nishiki who pulls him back from crossing that line. And he's somewhat thankful-ish during the end of Y0 for just not crossing that line. And he's like, I'm going to be doing the Yakuza my way kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten that if it wasn't for Nishiki, you would have been a Kazama? Right. And even going back to Y0, what did Nishiki do to be there for Kiryu? He was ready to kill him. To Mm -hmm. save him from horrendous, horrendous torture. And then when Kiryu said, we're done, like it's not safe for you, what does Nishiki do? He comes back and says, I don't care if it's dangerous. I'm fighting with you. But all Kiryu does is is just this one meeting? You're not going to dig a little deeper and try to unlock some memories? Like, really? Because he shot Kazuma in the shoulder? But also, from Nishiki's perspective, it's like as soon as he wasn't side by side with Kiryu anymore, Nishiki doesn't exist. It's like no one cares about Nishiki anymore. And it's so unfair because the moment Nishiki wasn't side by side with Kiryu, it's almost as if there's no one holding him back. He's sore. He just blossomed without having to be in Kiryu's shadow. And I think that's what's also mm-hmm. frustrating is that Nishiki was always in his shadow. Kiryu has only ever been truly dedicated to Kazuma, even to the point that he takes his words so absolute that he would abandon his brother far, far, far sooner than he should have. That pretty much summarizes it. Digging into that question made me so mad. <laughs> oh, okay, do you want to launch <laughs> us into our second burning question? Yes. So the next part is who ordered the hit on Kirio and why? And this is going to be a wild theory, but I think it's Majima. Like we know oh. not... Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> we have different hints. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well... Right after Kiryu is released from prison, Majima's already, like, pushing Kiryu's limits of wanting to fight and everything and saying that, oh, you're, you've gone mushy, you've gone soft. So it would make sense that 
Majima actually ordered it, knowing that Kiryu isn't going to die in prison. I think we both know that, and there's good enough security. So Majima is like, dude, let's try to just find ways to keep him in shape, keep him in Yakuza fighting shape. And it's his way of pushing Kiryu's buttons without needing to physically fight him or physically be there to fight him himself. I like this theory, number one, because my follow-up question was, why did whoever ordered this hit not follow up and try again? So that answers <laughs> that question, because he doesn't really want him dead. He just wants him mm -hmm. to fight. <laughs> yeah, He just wants him in shape. That, that makes total sense. And I also feel like Majima would be the kind who'd be like, oh, like, tell him it was Sarah who, who you know, ordered the mm -hmm. hit. Yeah. Oh, and use a fork, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I 100% would believe that it's Majima. My theory... Is it was, Sarah. And oh. here's why. <laughs> it's due to my extensive, deep distrust of Kasuma. <laughs> <laughs> because our biggest issue and why we have this question of who ordered the hit on Kiryu is because in the previous scene, Shinji is giving Kiryu his expulsion letter. And Kiryu's like, it should be a full-out banishment. I killed a patriarch. And so like, why is Sarah being soft and then trying to kill him? That doesn't add up. And so my theory is because Shinji says, Kazuma-san told me to give this letter of expulsion to you. It didn't come directly from Sarah. It came from Kazuma. Maybe he went over Sarah's head here, in a way. And Sarah's like, nah. Like, <laughs> if someone kills a patriarch, they have to pay. And that's one half of, of this potential theory. The other half is Sarah knows that Kiryu needs to be put to death. And he's probably too good of a leader to allow suspicions to arise by letting Kiryu live. So maybe he sent the expulsion instead of the banishment just to appease Kazuma, but then later ordered this hit on Kiryu because he has to pay for what he did. It makes sense because Sarah is really black and white. You either did something and you're okay, or you did something wrong and you're going to get punished. And no matter who you are... You're going to get the punishment that you deserve for whatever crimes you did. So I could see Sarah not playing favorites and saying that you kill them, you own up to it, and I'm going to have someone kill you. <laughs> topic three. Let's do it. This topic is just anything else. These are just small tidbits that we found that we wanted to discuss. So the first one is about Yumi's character arc. And she's one of the few females we know how much we love Reina. So I was going to talk about someone else. So at Yumi, and I'm wondering if we think she is the villain in Nishiki's perspective. Like, yeah, I think Nishiki had a crush on her, but I mean, it turned sour pretty quickly, right? Well, it's more than that, though. Like, they all grew up together. So there's mm -hmm. even if, if the, the feelings were mutual, there should still be some kind of love and respect mm -hmm. after growing up in an orphanage together, right? Mm -hmm. But no, everything, the fallout that happens in the very last episode or the very last chapter where Nishi fights back and she just like falls to the ground because she can't handle <laughs> someone's throwing it back at her face, even though it's well deserved. Like how <laughs> doesn't he just say like, shut up or something? And she just yeah, immediately like crumbles. Right? I'm sorry, it's I shouldn't so... laugh. I shouldn't laugh. But it's... <laughs> no, it's for a really ridiculous reason. And I feel like she is the villain in Nishiki's point of view. And I'm wondering if Nishiki regrets killing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not cool to rape someone, but it's like, if he regrets not being the <laughs> one. And... <laughs> you, you think he wanted it to happen? You think he regrets no. stopping it? No, as in like, letting... Her think that Kiryu is the, uh. like, the the prince in a way. Damn, like, I thought you were going so dark with that. Thank oh, goodness. Oh no, <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have clarify. It's not that like regrets. If Nishiki regrets not clarifying with her that hey, Kiryu isn't the one who killed you because we know she has the memory uh, mm -hmm. loss and everything. So wait, I think maybe but, Nishiki. Hmm? But she regains it. She regains her memory when Sarah and Jingu try to kill her. She sees Kazuma's gun and, ha and remembers all her memories. So she would know at that point when Haruka's still a little baby 
that Nishki is the one that killed him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And she still scolds him like a child. Like, she parents him more than she parents Haruka. I know. She's a terrible parent to Haruka. <laughs> First of all, she's, she's, like, Haruka could have died and she wouldn't have known or cared or done anything to stop that. Well, and I'm going to place my child in an orphanage because I want to steal $10 billion of her father's money just to get back at him. How selfish. The next game we play, I'm going to need you to pick a game with a stronger female lead. <laughs> Don't say that. Oh my god, Lee, I'm looking at your face. I'm looking at season three. I'm looking at season three. Dude, that means the next games in season two aren't even going to have a strong female lead. Well, here's the thing. One of them hasn't been released yet. <laughs> the rest of them no but <laughs> there's still the Kathy's Choice wild card okay <laughs> and there, there's a strong woman in <laughs> but she's not a lead Okay, but I think you'll I mean, like her yeah that's fine I mean I need a female character where she can protect herself she would have uh, slapped Nishki across the face and yes. put some sense into him that's what I'll say yes <laughs> So my first anything else topic is inconsistencies surrounding Mizuki. So I was re-watching the meeting between Kiryu and Nishiki, and then Nishiki starts discussing Mizuki, right? Things mm -hmm. do not add up. It's wild. <laughs> so number one, Nishiki says that they accidentally killed Mizuki, torturing her, correct? So issues with that. Number one, uh, she dies, but Mizuki is Yumi who is alive at the time. Sure, this person, that sure was so high-pitched. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this person is likely the same person Date says was pulled out of the river, so we know it's actually not Yumi, but so then who is it? It's easy enough to fake a body to look like Yumi, as Nishitani was planning to do in Y0 for Makoto, but even that plan required smashing in the devil's face to ensure correct identification. So, who is this perfect replica, tattoo and all? She didn't just have to be a convincing dead Mizuki, she had to be a convincing alive Mizuki. She had to be a perfect copy and withstand torture? <laughs> who would do this? I'm you wondering if Nishiki was fed bad bad news. Like, uh, it's the, the doubt and <laughs> in, in the skepticism in Kazuma. I almost feel like Kazuma's the one who spread the word that it's his people and he didn't see it himself that he heard about it do we know what that he was personally there to see to watch uh mizuki die nishiki was there yeah because remember he unloaded his clip into one of his men oh yeah so he was there well, when it happened hmm. i was almost gonna blame kazama for it but well let me continue because i will find a way to blame him so okay. if it was caught like did kazama and the forger woman I forget her name, my apologies, but did Kazuma and the Forger base Mizuki's looks on this random woman who was unfortunate enough to look exactly like Yumi? And in that case, was she just shouting, I'm not Mizuki, I'm not Mizuki, when she was being tortured? And the second issue with Nishiki saying that they killed her is, he then continues on later in this scene, like three sentences later, to say, Mizuki opened Aris and then she fell off the map. You just said that you killed her. How did she fall off the map? You killed her. So, like, did Nishiki know it wasn't Mizuki he was torturing? If so, then why torture her? All I can think is that this was a woman very committed to Kazuma, Yumi, and Sarah's plan. And so she was like, I'll be the body double, and I'm going to stand up to torture. But if that's true, and Nishiki figured it out, then why would he, like, hide that fact? And why would he say that oh mizuki died but then say oh mizuki fell off the map it's like you just contradicted yourself in front mm -hmm. of kiryu <laughs> it doesn't add up at all who is this woman you're right and who is a who is this woman who's willing to die nobody that cause? person doesn't exist yeah i don't understand right is is Kazuma, like, brainwashing people and, and, and Nishiki's one of the victims? Unless that was Yumi and the people who were torturing her, Kazuma, like, got to them and convinced them to work for him and, like, pretend like she's dead. 
But that seems like mm-hmm. a really high risk situation. But what about the gun shooting? I don't think they shot her. There's a cut on her neck, though, and it looks pretty mm-hmm. like it would kill you. Mm-hmm. I think it's a just a a plot hole. I was going insane watching the scene. And some of it you could account to, like, translation error, the whole fine, like, falling off mm-hmm. the map thing, but not the whole scene of him torturing her. That's not translation error. That was animated. I don't even have an answer for you. I feel like this needs to go on Reddit. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. And then we both had, for a topic, the empty lot. Mm-hmm. And you sounded pretty excited, so mine are pretty short. Maybe I'll go first. I'll let you go first. Mm-hmm. So... In Y0, we saw Nishiki deeply impacted at the empty lot when Makoto and Tachibana reunited, so to speak. And now Nishiki has died at the same location as Tachibana. But not only that, he's having his Mm. own tragic reuniting with Kiryu. It's the same thing. Two tragic reunitings and a death. It's the same thing. This lot is cursed. It is cursed with Tachibana's blood. It did not deserve to be spilled well that's the thing though tachibana's his memorial is right there on that empty lot that's what we see in that last scene right that makoto is planting or her reunion leah right (laughs) so it's um and that building is on the empty lot this building is on the empty lot and tachibana has always wanted the most power that in the beginning he wanted he only had half power right this is full power millennium tower is the most powerful building right in a way tachibana has just resurrected to be this building is tachibana haunting the building yes that's my theory this is like it's not even this this is the pride the joy that this is what tachibana wanted and because he can't physically be there he's going to be there in spirit in the form of a building that has just the power and the The strength of just everything that is Tachibana is now embodied in this building. Did he win? Did he win? I think he did. Did the Yakuza win? Oh my gosh. Right? This is the full circle that we're talking about. This is why I was so excited last night when I I made this (laughs) conclusion. And I was like, Tachibana is literally the foundation of this building. (laughs) Yes. Like, (laughs) figuratively and literally. Oh my gosh. Right? Tachibana I felt so is proud. The building. <laughs> Coming up with this this idea. I don't know if it's true, but I feel very, very proud of coming to this realization. That's crazy. Okay, but do you know what's really wild? What? So I'm going to Japan in a few months. Uh-huh. And we're actually staying in the city that Yakuza is based off of for mm-hmm. half of our trip. And they just built a, a skyscraper in that oh, dude <laughs> and i'm kind of freaked out like it was just built i'm kind of freaked out you should write at the like like a, something on like a bunch in that says like we're tachibana <laughs> and put it at the corner or at the bottom of it and, and just oh, dedicate it to him i hope i'm okay when i go to the, <laughs> to the empty lot you guys <laughs> well i feel like tachibana is there to protect the the building he knows I'm on his side. I'll bring him mm-hmm. some. Um, I'll bring him a. a <laughs> I'll bring him a prosthetic foot <laughs> as an offering. Mm-hmm. I feel bad even saying that he's not a real person. Um, on that note, <laughs> should we move on to our last topic, mm-hmm. the KFC yes. Awards? I'm so excited. And so I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, four people. And I want you to guess who you think. And I'll start out easy. Um, Kiryu, because he's the main character. Haruka, because she's just so cute. And at times she's like more mature than everyone else. Talk about strong female character. She's going to be one. Nishiki, because he redeemed himself. And Shinji, I mean, the man, the myth, legend. (laughs) Shinji. Hang his yes. trench coat in the rafters. No one can ever wear a trench coat ever again. Especially not with a purple silk shirt. It's taken, people. <laughs> yes, you're, you're right. It, I mean, as much as, like, Nishiki probably for Y0, I feel like in this game, the Shinji just stole everyone's heart. How can you say no? He had no faults. 
Except maybe trust yeah. in Cosmo, but he didn't know any better. I think he's yeah. a very underrated character. He is. Point two, let's talk about okay. the Kentucky Scorcher. <laughs> so this might be just a little bit of a letdown because I didn't send you any blind picks for this game mm-hmm. because there's like two new characters. You already mm-hmm. know their personalities, even though some of them change mm-hmm. a little bit. So there's no blind pick, unfortunately, yeah. for this game. So you have Sarah. You know how much I really appreciate his his personality and everything, and I think he's just so cool. <laughs> We're already white. on person, and like the fourth word you said was personality. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> but is he hot though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're into <laughs> other men, <laughs> ask me when I'm older, and I'll say yes. <laughs> okay, continue. Okay. <laughs> Um, Mishki pre-slap. <laughs> so, I mean, it's unfair, but it's Mishki or Prison Kirio with those massive forearms and biceps. Okay, okay, okay. No <laughs> contest. It's Prison Kirio because before we even got here, like yesterday, I was thinking about what my guesses would be to your question of who is it. Mm-hmm. Like, I forgot you listed them all off. Mm-hmm. And so I was just going to blind guess, and I was going to say Prison Kiryu. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I have to stick with it. It's Prison Kiryu. <laughs> so, I feel bad because I did highlight them, and right before we started, I changed my answer back to Nishiki. And so I didn't have see him at all. Oh, no, no. I no, I, I was I was cleaning up my outline this morning. I changed oh, it you again. Oh, cha- you changed so. your mind. Yeah, I changed my mind. So I'll give you well, half credit because up until this morning, um, yeah. <laughs> it you was know what? Though maybe this you. is a little bit of proof that maybe personality doesn't always win out. Maybe yeah. you can slap a woman to the floor, stop it, murder her, and still stop. still be attractive. <laughs> stop it! I mean, okay, Ted Bunny. Ted Bunny. It sounded like you case. said bunny, and I cannot <laughs> stop. <laughs> Try. I am trying so hard to not laugh. <laughs> it's Ted Bunny. Ted Bunny. <laughs> Ted Bunny. He brings his dates bunnies before he kills them. <laughs> Ew. It's even worse. It's even worse. I'm sorry. Well, you want to see a magic trick? <laughs> Look Turn over here, now off. you're dead. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> Stale okay. biscuit? Stale. Stale biscuit. Okay. Kazama. I mean,. Like, yeah, we just went through a whole topic about him. Jingu, because that man just literally tried to kill a child. Nonetheless, his daughter. Yumi, because she's freaking judgy and she just collapses and crumbles to the ground when she gets one little shut up. And she's <laughs> <pretty> snobbish. <laughs> Date, because he is a bad father. He loses Haruka multiple times. And he's a pretty stale character. <laughs> and yeah, those are one, two, three, four. This is hard because Kazuma's an mm-hmm. Yumi, we don't like at all. Um, Jingu <laughs> has good claim to the throne. Like, there's a lot of stale biscuits here. Mm-hmm. I think I have to say Jingu, though. I feel like it's it's pretty unforgivable to try to kill your own child. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, but I think I wrote Kazuma and I wrote, I really <laughs> blew this man. <laughs> What? What'd you write? I wrote, everybody boo this man. <laughs> boo. Boo. I sound like a cow. <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah. That's I what mean, I would Date, have picked. Date's pretty stale for his character arc and everything, but really, the stale biscuit in our terms. I feel like it's because I'm like, yeah, Jingu, but he's only there for like 10 minutes, if any. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like Kazuma, for two games, straight up disrespect to Nishiki. And I have to say, he's he's my stale biscuit. I can't I can't help but agree with you. I don't mm-hmm. like him. <laughs> All right. Oh, anything else? Or is that it? I think that's it. Wow, that was a quick one. But we also have this process down. Just over an hour. We do. Well, and also after editing the last episode, which raw 
was at two hours and 22 minutes. I was like, What's never that? again are we recording for that length of time. The files were like two gigs. It was big. It was bad. All right, so we are at the end of this game, and that means we're going to be starting a new game next week. So if you can guess what game this quote is from. Damn, things going to be crooked by the time I'm done with this city. Let us know. Email us. Message us on Instagram, on Twitter. Comment, or don't comment on our website because everyone will see that, but message us on our website. You you can figure it out. I'm sure you're all smart and very capable. And you might win something. So why not? Give it a shot. Should I count us out? Yeah. Okay. Let's do audacity on one, three, two, one. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to send in any questions, comments, or game suggestions. You can find all our contact info on our website, replayreviewspod.com, or contact us directly through our site. Did we completely miss something? Are we way off the mark? Or do you just want us to take a deeper look at anything from the game? We'll tackle any topics you all want to hear in our season wrap-up episode. We also have a Reddit where we discuss anything we're curious about. Go take a look and let us know what you're thinking. Think you can guess which game is up next based on this obscure quote? Damn, things gonna be crooked by the time I'm done with this city. Message us on Instagram or contact us through our website to see if you're right. Our theme music is Condemned by Eggy Toast. They'll play you out, and we'll be back next week with a new game.